and I and I will be moderating the uh, session today. First, some practical information. As I said, please choose a language in the bottom uh, at the in the screen and uh, uh, low. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I will recommend you to use headset to get the full experience. And we also have an active. Q and A, um, where you can, uh, where we will invite you to uh, to uh, tap in questions during the webinar. So um, please comment or write questions or start to introduce yourself and your company in the in the Q and R. Um, we will also have a Q and R session at the end of the webinar. So uh, so please already start now to ask questions. The webinar will be recorded uh, as you probably have recognized already. So once again, welcome everyone to uh, to joining us from around the globe, from Angola, Bangladesh, Denmark, India, Vietnam, and, and beyond. So today's webinar follows the UN International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. So uh, let's get started. Our speakers today, today are representing different steps in the value chain. So uh, we these are very, very powerful guests with a deep insight into the food system and today's topic and with high ambitions to create change for a more sustainable future. And I'm very sure that our next speakers can agree on this because actions are needed when we look at the challenges ahead of us. So I would now like to welcome Sanne Hoy André, Sector Council Food and Agriculture uh, at the Embassy of Denmark in Vietnam, and Hans Ebensgo Murillo, Minister Councillor for Food and Agriculture at the Embassy of Denmark in Indonesia. You will talk about how the Danish public sector is ready to assist countries in achieving substantial uh, reductions in their food loss and waste. So uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mia. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Hans Murillo. And I'm Minister Councillor for Food and Agriculture at the Danish Embassy in Jakarta. Together with uh, my good colleague, Sene Andrein from the Embassy in Hanoi, we're very happy to be highlighting the important issue of food loss and waste now in the margins of the International Day of Food Loss and Waste Awareness. And if we can go to the next slide. I think maybe we have to go back a few slides. Yes, thank you. So just briefly on the agenda, in general terms, we want to describe some of the current challenges in the present situation. Then we will share some of the uh, actions that the governments in Vietnam and in Indonesia have taken already to tackle food loss and waste. And finally, we want to share with you how the strategic sector cooperation activities can support food loss and waste reduction. So next slide, please. First of all, then, on the present situation and challenges. Next slide. It's important to highlight that this is an issue throughout the value chain for foods and agricultural goods. There are challenges all the way from farm to fork, or if you will, from farm to chopsticks. These challenges could be the inefficient use of uh, fertilizers, inefficient harvesting practices, lack of cold storage, poor food handling in processing, poor planning for meals in households, or for example, poor understanding of date labels. Next slide, please. Now, if we look at food loss specifically, in Indonesia, up to 21 million tons of food are lost annually across production, post-harvest, storage, and processing stages. 
In total, the economic loss from this equates to about 2 to 3% of Indonesia's GDP. For Vietnam, we see around 8.8 million tons of food loss before reaching processing plants or distribution centers. Similarly, uh, it's about 2% of the country's GDP. Such food loss represents a considerable economic burden on the agricultural sector of both countries, a sector which contributes significantly to the national economies. Next slide, please. Now, with regards to food uh, waste, we see the following. In Indonesia, up to a staggering 26 million tons of food is wasted annually in distribution and by consumers. In households alone, that figure is around 19 million tons. Vietnam, while producing less household waste than Indonesia, still wastes approximately 7 million tons of food each year at the consumer level. Remember that these are not absolute numbers, and they're not relative to the respective populations of Indonesia and Vietnam. One thing, however, we see in common is that as the income levels in both countries increase, lifestyles and consumption habits change. Many households are now able to purchase more food than they need, leading to food spoilage. The trend towards increasing food waste is really worrying because food waste is actually associated with a significantly higher climate cost than food loss. Food waste includes the waste of energy, human resources, water, ingredients, packaging, and so forth used in the production of the final food product. So I think this is a really important reminder that as nations like Indonesia and Vietnam experience economic growth, there needs to be a parallel focus on reducing food waste, a focus we also need to have in Denmark. Consumer awareness, better food management practices, and education about efficient storage and expiration labels are some key ways of addressing these growing issues. Next slide. And actually my colleague Senna will take over now. Thank you, Hans. So we will in the following slides highlight some of the government uh, actions to tackle food loss and waste in Vietnam and Indonesia. And we start with Vietnam. This slide highlights the government actions in Vietnam aimed at addressing food loss and waste. <clears throat> Vietnam has set an ambitious target in its national action plan to combat food loss and food waste. By 2030, the goal is to reduce food waste by 50% to cut down the food losses across the entire production and supply chain with a specific focus on minimizing post-harvest losses. This includes measures to improve the efficiency of the agricultural system, promote post-harvest technologies and implement scientific advancements to reduce losses. Currently, Vietnam is, however, lacking a specific legal framework dedicated to solely to food loss and waste. But there are still a key, a number of key number, <laughs> a number of key government uh, decisions and laws that support the initiatives regarding a uh, reduction of food loss and waste. Oh, go back. A part of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, the government in Vietnam is focused on developing inclusive and efficient agricultural and food system. One step of this is the establishment of the Food System Transformation Partnership, where there, among others, will be a technical working group only focusing on food loss and waste. Next slide, please. This slide outlines Indonesia's key initiatives in combating food loss and waste. Indonesia has developed a circular economy roadmap as a long-term strategy to create a more sustainable economic model. Uh, one of the key targets of the roadmap is to achieve a 75% reduction of, in food loss and waste by 2045. Indonesia is currently also working on a presidential regulation on food rescue. This regulation is expected to provide the legal basis for food loss and waste management in Indonesia, also including food rescue. An, es an essential component of the Indonesian strategy is the development of a standard calculation method for food loss and waste data. By developing a standardized approach to measure and monitor 
food loss and waste. Uh, Indonesia also aims to ensure accurate data collection, which is critical when you have to develop uh, targeting interventions and tracking progress uh, towards that 2045 goals. So how does these um, initiatives that is already in action by the government, how are they uh, followed up by our SSC programs here in uh, Vietnam and Indonesia? So in this slide, we can see example of joint uh, initiatives, uh, both some are from Indonesia, some are from Vietnam, and some will go across both countries. But what goes together for all of them is that they are addressing food loss and waste. <clears throat> and I will uh, not have time at this presentation to go through all of them, so I will highlight a few. In Indonesia, one key initiative is the development and dissemination of a dual date labeling regulation. This regulation will help clarify the difference between best before and use by dates on food products, ensuring consumers are better informed about when food is safe to consume. And it also addresses uh, consumer confusions around expiration dates, which often leads to a prematurely discarding food that is still good to eat. In Vietnam, we are supporting the development of a food loss assessments to better understand the current status of food loss in the respective supply chains. This involves collected data on where food loss occurs most frequently, and understanding this is critical for creating targeting intervention. For both countries, another critical step is the development of food safety regulations that allow for food distribution. These initiatives encourage uh, for the safe donation and redistribution to, of excess food from supermarkets, restaurants, and other food businesses to those in need, and also thereby reducing the food waste while helping combat food insecurity. These SNC initiatives in both Indonesia and Vietnam represent a comprehensive and multifaceted approach to reducing food loss and food waste. By addressing issues from a regulatory framework to awareness campaigns, these countries are setting an example on how developing countries can work together to tackle uh, global food waste issues. Next slide. So that was all uh, from Hans and I at this point. Uh, but please, as mentioned by me earlier, if you have any questions to us, please write them in the Q&A box. Thank you so much, uh, Sen and uh, Hans, for sharing these very important uh, collaborative initiatives to uh, to prevent uh, uh, food uh, loss and waste. And um, we are, uh, yeah, we are we are super uh, happy for for having these uh, initiatives. So actually, I would like to ask, uh, yeah, both of you, but I hope one of you would answer uh, a, a question because I would like to know in your work, what is the most important action uh, needed to, to support the sectors in uh, in Vietnam and, uh, and Indonesia? Could, could one of you answer me uh, on this question? I think I can start at least. I think it's, it's very difficult to pick one. Uh, so we could probably uh, mention quite a few, both of us, and some will vary between the countries. Um, but I think one of the uh, things that we are currently going to work on uh, here in Vietnam is the the part about uh, food donation. Uh, how do we have uh, ensure a system where we can have food donation in a safe way and still uh, make sure that we have food safety matters in place? Thank you so much, Sen. Uh, Hans, would you support or else we will? I think uh, I, I agree with Sen that the food donation aspect is very important to deal with. Uh, and it is uh, because it tackles food loss and waste towards the end of the chain again. This is where it really has a climate uh, effect and uh, it's where the reduction can be, can be very powerful. As we know, that's where it's increasing. So. Tackling food donation regulations is really important and consumer awareness aspects go hand in hand with that. 
Thank you so much, uh, Hans and Sanne. And uh, I think we will also hear more about this, uh, uh, these kind of initiatives later in this webinar. Because uh, our next inspiring speaker will be sharing how a collaborative approach to food value chain engagement can prevent food loss and waste uh, throughout the, the value chain. So uh, please uh, welcome uh, Emilie Mille Müller, who is a secretarial employee from the think tank uh, One Third, which is a think tank on prevention of food loss and waste. Emilie, the, the floor is yours, so uh, welcome. Thank you so much, Mi. I'm trying to share my uh, presentation, but it doesn't uh, tells me that I'm not able to host disabled attendee screen sharing. All right. Can uh, somebody can someone help me? Yes, I have disabled my screen, so you can share it again. Ah, yes. I'm going to try again. No. Sorry, guys. I think you like her permissions have been removed. Okay, we will we will just start uh, to uh, to solve uh, this issue, and I think everybody's on it right now. So, um, is it me? Have I done something? Okay, there you go. Super. So, uh, me okay, so this is. Um... I sent you a presentation this morning. This is a PDF and it has fun, a funny look on our logo, which is fine, but it's also fine. We'll go with that. Hey? Okay, so um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am here today to talk to you about the Danish uh, think tank, One Third, and how we work uh, collaboratively with stakeholders uh, to reduce food. So, as Mia said, my name is uh, Mille. Uh, I've been working with uh, food loss and waste for the past eight, nine years, uh, and specifically in two roles. I work partly for the Danish Ministry of Food, and then I also work for the Think Tank One Third. And you may change the slide. Thank you. So in Denmark, yes, in Denmark, we waste uh, about 900,000 tons of food every year. This is uh, avoidable uh, food waste. Now, this uh, waste is uh, metaphorically liquid. It floats around in the different parts of the food value chain, and if you try and put and into it in one part of the uh, food value chain, it will most likely pop up somewhere else. So let me give you an example. Um, in Denmark, we have a large um, hotel chain that works uh, hard to reduce their food waste. Uh, and it's, it's working. Uh, one day, though, the project manager called his uh, supplier of potatoes and he asked uh, him do I actually create food waste in your business uh, and of course he does so the hotel chain is, uh, potatoes cut in to fries which uh, leaves a large amount of food waste uh, with the potato supplier um, yeah, so to tackle this, uh, we obviously need uh, more than just isolated efforts. Uh, we need a collaborative uh, approach that brings all actors together in the food ecosystem. Um, please change the slide. Thank you. So one third was established by the Danish government in 2019. It uh, functions uh, independently from the Danish uh, Ministry of Food. Its mission is to reduce food loss and waste by ensuring uh, collaboration in the food value chain. We involve uh, diverse stakeholders. We involve public authorities, municipalities. We involve food businesses, NGOs, and researchers. 
Uh, in Denmark, we have a long and solid tradition of solving complex challenges uh, through uh, collaboration, and we believe it works. And so in the think tank, we have a strong focus on uh, public-private uh, partnerships. You may change the slide. We are led uh, by a board of directors who, again, represents different parts of the food value chain. Uh, again, one third operates independently from the government. So we, re we receive funds from the government, but we are free of political uh, interests. This is uh, uh, important because uh, it means that we get to say unpopular things uh, like uh, what kind of waste right now is uh, in the uh, food production or what kind of effect could legislation have on food waste. Sometimes um, there's some things that people just don't want to hear. We have around 35 members and then we have a small uh, secret secrecy secretary uh, this is um, to run admin and um, gather all the people and make the groups and that is me and my colleague uh, Leah so the members uh, uh, obviously come from a lot of different places uh, retail again NGO researchers places and they uh, work in in small groups uh, with different uh, topics related to food waste. And this is uh, the members themselves that bring up these uh, topics. And yeah, so the diverse uh, group help bring together all, all different perspectives from across the food value chain in a certain um, issue. So, uh, obviously, by tapping into this uh, range of expertise, our members, uh, we ensure that uh, solutions are not only smart or innovative, but also uh, grounded in real work uh, experience. Uh, change, please. Can I have a new slide? Thank you. Uh, one third has been given five focus areas uh, to work with. Uh, we have to support the civil society's battle against uh, food loss and food waste. Uh, we do that, uh, for instance, through campaigns. Uh, we have to contribute to general business opportunities. Uh, we do that by uh, launching um, catalogs that can help businesses uh, reduce their food waste. We uh, have to offer insights on how to overcome barriers to prevent food waste and food loss. We will do that, for instance, through working groups. We have to ensure that data collection and impact assessment is improved in Denmark. Uh, we do that through our voluntary agreement. And then uh, last but not least, uh, we have to cooperate with uh, foreign partners on know-how and sharing of uh, experiences. Um, you may change the slide. Um, so we work uh, with uh, these, uh, oh, that was actually too fast doesn't matter. We work with these uh, focus areas in different ways. Uh, and as I said before, it's the members that come up with the topics themselves. So for instance, right now we have a group working with educational uh, products for primary school. Uh, and we have a group that works with extended shelf life of dairy products. And we have a group that works with uh, food waste uh, in hospitals. Uh, we do have a few key projects that we work with on a regular basis, and one of them is uh, the campaign that you can see here. So we have a yearly uh, campaign that we activate around the national and international uh, food waste day, September 29th, and this is to help uh, raise and engage consumers in behavioral change because uh, we know that reducing food is reducing food waste is not only about the businesses, but also about the people. 
So the campaign is built around a slogan called uh, Denmark Saves Food, but the exact topic uh, can change every year and we like to keep it quite specific. So this year, uh, for instance, um, it's about what consumers can do in their homes to be better at preserving their food, so make their food uh, last longer. Um, and we call it uh, Good Habits Saves Food or Good Food Habits Saves Food. And it's basically good advice on how to package your food, what can go in the fridge, what shouldn't go next to the banana, uh, and so on. Uh, the campaign is always open sourced, which means that anyone who wants to communicate with the consumers, any business who wants to communicate uh, with the consumers about food waste, they can basically just uh, slap their logo on the material and uh, use everything uh, for free. Change the slide. Thank you. Um, Another uh, key project, which I also mentioned before, is our voluntary uh, agreement uh, called uh, Denmark Against uh, Food Waste. It's a voluntary agreement that gathers, uh, we have uh, 38 big businesses now from Denmark, from different parts of the food value chain. Uh, they all work towards the same goal, uh, to cut food waste by 50% in 2030. And so uh, each member measures their progress using the same method, and then they report their results to a neutral third party. Neutral meaning that I don't get to see the numbers uh, before they are gathered in one big uh, thing. Uh, the data gets published annually, uh, and it, it's, uh, it gets public published in an anonymous way um, so we can uh, uh, have a picture of how we are altogether progressing towards uh, the target of uh, reducing food waste by 50%. This uh, encourages the members to not only reduce their waste, but hopefully also take into consideration the other parts of the uh, value chain is uh, data gets um, presented in a unity as a whole. Uh, so uh, the, the thing that can be hard is that as a business, you could have reduced your food waste. But if the whole picture is that someone else um, had more food waste, that's what the, the full picture will show, which is um, reality. Um, you can change the slide now. Um, we recently uh, launched a new inspiration catalog focusing on plug and play smart technologies in the food sector. It provides uh, insights for businesses looking to implement best practices with uh, food waste. This is because we found that there is a lot of uh, small or middle, middle, small, middle, big, I don't know what you call them, businesses that still hasn't implemented the easy fix solution that you can do in order to reduce food waste. So we made this catalog and we tried to make it clear um, who could who could use this uh, technology, but also how difficult is it to work with? How difficult is it to uh, implement it? Um, does it cost a lot? Um, all these things. And next slide. Every year uh, we host an innovation conference called SPISPA. The word SPISPA means edible. Uh, this year, it's going to be about upcycling in the food sector. Uh, we have made a report that focuses on the 12 biggest side streams in the Danish food uh, production. And we will have people working with each side stream at the, at the event. It is meant to bring the industry together to explore innovative ways to repurpose food. Uh, food that would otherwise uh, go to waste. 
And um, yeah, so these are a few of the concrete examples of uh, how one third is uh, trying to take a collaborative approach uh, to working with uh, food waste and loss. So uh, I want to emphasize uh, the importance of collaborating by finishing my story about the hotel project manager and his potato supplier. Because after having asked uh, what uh, kind of amount of food waste he created at the supplier's place, he obviously asked, what can we do? And so it is that today the hotel chain has a food waste potato soup on the menu every Wednesday. I don't know if it's every Wednesday, but at least it's every week. And the supplier has obviously also reduced his food waste. So uh, in summary, reducing food loss and waste requires a collective effort across the value chain from business to business and from policymakers to business and from business to consumers and so on and so on. And that's what we try to work with in one third. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mille. And um, also for sharing this uh, good, motivating uh, story um, and for, for your great work uh, at preventing uh, food loss and, uh, and waste. And I hope that will be for inspiration for all of you. Uh, just a very, very quick uh, question for you, Mille, because uh, could you just say, uh, what is um, one effective action to reduce food loss and waste that people might not expect uh, or maybe often overlook? I mean, is there something where you say, okay, this is something you, you should need to turn uh, through? Uh, yeah, so... I would say that all businesses has a different journey and they will have to implement different uh, initiatives. Um, uh, I don't really have anything that surprises me. <laughs> One thing that we all have to do that everybody has to do, everybody has to measure their food waste and they have to start measuring the food waste in their own business. And I would say that maybe the surprising part is that actually just um, that intervention of measuring your food waste is, uh, as I know, the only intervention that is proven to reduce your food waste. So just, you know, getting started, looking at it, doing one thing will reduce uh, your food waste. Uh, and then just because I've already talked too long, I think it's very important that it lives in the DNA of your CEO. This is an agenda that has to go all the way to the top. In order for it to be in the DNA of your business, it needs to be in, uh, of your C CEO. And then, uh, you know, God damn it, be brave enough to ask that question. What kind of food waste am I creating uh, with my suppliers or my um, my other partners? Yeah. So Thank you so much, uh, Mila. Long. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. If you have any uh, questions for Mille, then uh, please um, write them in the Q&R. So not, now we would uh, like to uh, move on to our next speaker, who is uh, Charlotte Sørensen, who is a business development manager at Arla Food Ingredients. So uh, welcome to you, Charlotte. We are super excited to hear your presentation on the valorization of side and by streams from the dairy and food supply chain. And I think this topic uh, holds this um, incredible potential for, for transforming waste into value. And uh, we are, of course, very eager to learn about your insights uh, on how these strategies can actually drive sustainability and innovation in the food system. So, um, Charlotte, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for getting uh, for letting Arla Food Ingredients present our, um, our, our experiences in, in variation of site and by streams from the dairy and fruit supply chain and building. I mean, the all, all, all our aim is to build sustainable food and aff affordable and sustainable food system models. If you take the next slide, please. Then just very brief about our company, Arla Food Ingredients. We are a daughter company of Arla Foods, uh, one of the large 
uh, European uh, cooperatives, farmer owned. Uh, and uh, we are actually also a company upcycling, uh, living out of upcycling because we are upcycling way into va va value add food ingredients. So what we're doing, we're taking the side stream or the by stream from the cheese production of Arla and other dairies in Europe and convert it into protein powders, lactose powders, mineral powders, and uh, making different functionalities and nutrition profiles. And that is then sold as a food ingredients for all food, food and it can be yogurt, berry, milk, beverage, uh, nutrition supplements to the global food industry. One of our because upcycling is some, such very important for us. So how can we then also valorize side streams from, you, from the food industry into new products? And it's all about, if you take next slide, it's all about partnerships and working together, as Mia also was saying. So it's very much about having collaborative projects and work with NGOs, universities, other companies, suppliers, customers, um, competitors and also work with the authorities for bringing more affordable nutrition to the people who need it the most. Now, uh, if you take next slide, it is about finding the sweet spot. So it's about finding the sweet spot to, to make scalable business models and for bringing these attractive nutritious food to the market on market-based conditions. And, and I will now like to present three examples this is examples that, that has also been supported by the Danish Development Corporation Danida uh, from different parts of the world. So next slide, please. The first example, it is uh, from Pakistan and it is uh, way to value. So it is about greening the dairy sector in Pakistan. If you look at Pakistan, so the seven largest cheese producers in Pakistan, they, they produce roughly 145 million liters of whey water a year when they're making their cheese, which is the core business. And 30% of this whey water is just disposed or wasted into the environment. So how can we valorize this? And uh, so to make an environmental impact, but also to support sustainable business and improve public health. And there we have worked with Pakistan dairies, with GAIN, the NGO Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, and with the Confederation of Danes Industry, DI, to make some different concepts based on liquid waste water and in where we are replacing the milk. So this, to the right side of the, the, the slide, you can see uh, the, the first concept we have made, that's a prototype of a, a weight drink, refreshing based on 50 to 70% of waste water and then enriched with our proteins. And that is one example, it's now going into test production and uh, hopefully it will reach the market in, in the next year. Next slide, please. The other example that's about stretching the milk base for bringing affordable and nutritious yogurt to the, to the market. And this is an example from Ethiopia and Tanzania, where we are developing, uh, have been developing a fortified affordable yogurt. So uh, we, which is then fortified with vitamins and minerals to address the needs of uh, of the target consumers. One of the key elements here is to make a recipe which is very robust and stable, so we do not waste too much during production. But it's also about improving the shelf life so the product has a longer lifetime. And then the, to sell it into smaller serving size so not too much product is wasted. And then to be creative around new designs of distribution, so make it semi-frozen so it is easier to transport to, to the sales points. So it's all about reaching the target consumers and not being wasted. And the last one, next slide, please. The last example is from, from the fruit value chain because many, many fruits, crops, like dates, apricots, papaya, they should crumb easily to spoilage. And approximately 25% of the annual date crop in Pakistan is actually lost post-harvest. So how can we then transform this post-harvest lost uh, date into some valuable fruit and food for the people? And there we have, to, together with two uh, fruit manufacturers in Pakistan, we have developed a fruit bar, very much inspired by, by some similar products in Denmark, which are known by the kids in Denmark where we are actually doing a whey protein 
date bar and uh, and uh, so it's also have some nutrition values not only sugar and and this is now tested and then hopefully will be launched soon in Pakistan in the early next year and then to the last slide please so these to sum up all what we are trying to do is actually to to make these collaborative models for affordable nutrition and that is to drive transformative changes in the food value chain and to make sustainable impacts. So if we can utilize the side streams to make new uh, nutritious and affordable foods, then the food manufacturers, they get new products to sell. And, and by that, that uh, people can get more access to better food and better nutrition. And we as an ingredient supplier, we can also get a new market and new business. So hopefully it should be a win, win, win for all people. And the last slide, please. Then I'll say thank you and over to you again. Thank you so much, uh, Charlotte, for, for sharing these uh, very sustainable solutions, I will can, uh, call it, and, and uh, examples on, on how to, uh, to utilize uh, side and by streams. Um, I have a question because uh, to you, because <clears throat> over many years, I think stakeholder has been well, working internationally to uh, to reduce uh, food loss and waste, but but we are not there yet. So, so what is your best advice for businesses that want to uh, to effectively uh, utilize side and and by stream in their production processes? It is to investigate this side or by stream, and 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 then do a, a risk assessment simply to see what could be potential issues in relation to supply or quality that needs to be addressed before you jump into to, to, to utilization because so you have everything, food safety and logistic in place. Because there is a lot of things that you, then suddenly you turn for a focus from, from your main product to the side stream and, and there you need to be fully up to the speed of everything. So make a, 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 a strong risk assessment and then define very well the business opportunity and then it's just like any other new product developments. Super. Thank you so much for, for sharing this uh, good advice. And uh, and thank you for taking responsibility also in, in reducing food loss and waste. So um, there will be, uh, if you have questions for Charlotte, please uh, share them in the Q&R. So uh, now I'm really honored also to welcome the, the last guest, which is uh, Votim Trolle Hansen who's an operation uh, coordinator at uh, the Danish Food Bank, also called in Danish Fødevarebanken. Um, and I will guess I will call her a, a real action taker uh, or her organization, but also you all, uh, because uh, you have really taken uh, actual and important steps also towards uh, sustainable food handling by adding a, a link you can say to to the value chain for for otherwise uh, wasted food. So today you will uh, share some of the, the your um, your actions and and tools within this area. So um, welcome and the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much um, for the presentation. Um, today I will uh, discuss the critical role Fulva Bank plays in reducing food waste and fighting food insecurity in Denmark. Can you please go to the next slide? So um, the background of, uh, of Fødevarebanken is that uh, Fødevarebanken was established in 2008 after several years of establishing a operation in Copenhagen and surrounding areas. In 2013, we received a significant grant from um, the Velux Foundation, which is a private foundation, and which allowed us to become a nationwide organization. Today, Fildvar Banken is driven by, by around uh, two employees uh, that are, are paid for their work and 200 volunteers. Next slide, please. So we have uh, right now um, three operation centers, 
one in Aarhus that covers central and northern Jutland, the one in Kolding that covers southern Denmark, including Funen, and one by that covers Zealand and the islands. Next slide, please. Yes. So uh, it has been estimated that food waste in Denmark is more than 800,000 tons per year. As illustrated on the pie, the majority comes from the food industry. In addition, we receive food waste from retails and wholesales and primary production. Please, uh, next slide. So, Fødevarebanken helps fighting uh, food waste and supports people in need to make sure that the food we give out is safe and high quality. We focus a lot on food safety. We, we use uh, refrigerated trucks to keep the food at the right temperature during the delivery. And all the donated food is carefully checked before we accept it. We sort items by quality and check expiring state, packing and overall condition. We track all the food we received and give out using barcodes and dates, making sure that everything can be chased. Organizations uh, that get our food can show delivery records if needed by the Danish Veterinary and Food Administration. Our staff and volunteer are trained in food safety, ensuring proper handling and consistent safety standards. Next slide, please. So uh, we are delivered to around 350 locations uh, that receive food once a week, 144, which are in Copenhagen, where I'm the operation coordinator. This amount to 1,370 tons food annually in Denmark, corresponding to more than 900 meals a day. Please, the next slide. Yes. So from the free centers, we distrib distribute the uh, surplus food daily to shelters, crisis centers, drop-in centers, refuge centers, schools, and few food communities in public housing areas. For example, we have a partnership with the Kellogg's where we organize breakfast clubs for students at school as they're part of Denmark, where students come from family that cannot afford or manage to have breakfast together at home. We focus on the importance of eating together. So we only support organizations where meals are shared, not those that just give out food. We believe that sharing a meal together makes people happier compared to eating alone. Next slide, please. Therefore, we do not deliver to organizations that simply dis distribute food or to regular business, such as restaurants. This uh, was my quick uh, presentation about Fødevarebanken. Thank you uh, very much for the attention, and I'm happy to answer any question you may have. I know that um, our director, Leah, is with us and will support the Q&A. 
Super. Thank you so much uh, well, for this uh, great uh, presentation and uh, and for for sharing uh, your solutions and and how it works. So um, so this is uh, super inspiring uh, also uh, to hear about. And we are now uh, going into the Q and R session, and um, and I would like to uh, to take up some of the the questions that are in the Q and R. And I am so lucky that I have my uh, wonderful colleague sitting here next to me, and uh, he is handling the Q and R session. So um, so I will um, I will hear uh, if there are any. A uh, question, Jens, that you can share, uh, and I will mute here so you can uh, can share them. Uh, Thank you, just, uh, Can I just? Hello, everyone. No, I will just uh, ask if um, uh, if you can make sure that uh, Leia also have access to um, um, to speak. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, uh, yes Leia. I'm here. Yeah. Perfect. I'm so, here. Yes, Can you hear just... me? <laughs> yes, that's good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mia. Um, yes, we have a few questions. Uh, and uh, the first one is for Emile from uh, one third. Uh, the question is, can you describe more on how, uh, for instance, mechanisms or steps that you collect food loss and waste data from signatories? Can I can I describe it more? Uh, yeah, sure. And you I are muted, Mila. I think you need to. We cannot hear. I'm not. We can hear. Like her. I'm not muted. <laughs> Maybe it's only you that can hear me. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. 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 Cool. Um, so, uh, as I said, uh, once a year we collect these data from the different uh, uh, food businesses, we allow them uh, different, uh, so when I say the same method of collecting the data, that is uh, not entirely very detailed tr truth. We use uh, the same methods that you're allowed in the EU uh, Commission to collect data, and we have a data team that says, um, these data are good enough that we can uh, pile them together and have uh, a, a, a one um, a, a, a big uh, picture. I want to say, so some of you might be familiar with uh, the UN or the WRI uh, uh, has uh, different methods of um, uh, collecting data for food waste. So we've actually taken that collection of data um, methods. And then we've said, look, uh, Danish companies, uh, they uh, have enough resources to do it a little better. And so we've cut out some of those methods and said, you can only use uh, these two methods. Um, yeah, so um, was, that, was that answer? Or do you want me to go like into the uh, method? I think in order to uh, to to get uh, get a few more questions, it's it's uh, it's answer enough. But if if anyone uh, need uh, need more details, then please write in the chat, and we will we'll see if we can also uh, uh, do that. Thank you, Mila. Uh, we have another question for the food bank, uh, Uh Do you gather information regarding who receives the food from the food bank, for instance, societal groups? Uh, yes. Um. Um. Yes, we do. Um, we uh, we have a system where um, where we got gets um, all the information um, for um, for what um, the um, society groups uh, are getting. Um, yeah. Maybe I can um, yeah. add a bit to that answer. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. We are the only food waste organization in Denmark that actually scan all of our food. We have a whole process of scanning the food from when it arrives at our storages, our three operations that were described. And um, we are also the only operation registered in terms of all the legislation uh, that we need to meet 
in the same way that other food organizations and companies need to make sure that they follow all the rules for food security. So we have a whole scanner system that scans the food and it's travel, <laughs> if you could call it that, how it travels from to us from our stories and out to the to the different organizations. Every second year, we have like a poll or you would call the poll, but we ask all of our organizations, we have 400 that we deliver to every week in the whole country. And we ask them a lot of questions um, in a survey on where the food, you know, how is it used and how many people actually get to eat the food and stuff like that. So we have two levels of data in this uh, that would be relevant in this question i think and the one level is that we know exactly what type of organization this is is it a shelter is it a ch children's home is it somewhere where people who who suffer from uh, for example men mental disabilities or illnesses they they come and they get help so we have like an organizational level in terms of of the target groups here and then we also have from each organization, we have like more detailed information every second year on who actually eats the food and how is it put to use and and stuff like that. I, would that answer your question uh, or the question that was uh, put out there, Jens? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Leah, for uh, for also uh, mm -hmm. detailing this question. You're the director <laughs> at Fulva Bank. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> thank <laughs> you for fine. inviting me. <laughs> I've been listening. It's been very exciting. <laughs> So we have a last question uh, for one for Sanne um, from uh, the embassy in Vietnam. It's does Vietnam have a roadmap on food loss and waste reduction like in Indonesia, if not yet uh, with the regulations? Sorry, Jens, can you repeat that? Does, does Vietnam have a roadmap on food loss and waste reduction like in Indonesia? No, unfortunately, there is not a, a roadmap yet. Um, there are the national action plan uh, that are among uh, several things are covering uh, the um, the food loss, food waste, and then there are a number of decisions and the food safety law that will also, in at least some degree, cover it. But there is no uh, roadmap or no legal framework that are directly covering food loss or food waste. Thank you, Sanne. Thank you so much, Sanne. And uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, the, the, we need to end the webinar now. Uh, and uh, it has been super, super inspiring. And thank you so much to, to all the speakers. And um, if you have any more questions, I know there were some few more questions uh, in, the, in the chat and the Q&A session and uh, we will not be able uh, to have them here because uh, the seminar ends here at 11 o'clock but i will recommend you to reach out to uh, hans and sen at the hans at the embassy in indonesia and uh, sen at the embassy in uh, vietnam because they will be able to to answer uh, the questions um, so uh, they're very easy to get hold of, I think. So uh, thank you so much to all of you for participating here today and uh, for taking action uh, to uh, prevent food loss and waste. It is super important and, uh, and we are happy that uh, so many could join today. So thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye.